State of Vermont, I hereby open the 2021 biennial session of the Senate and call the Senate to order. We will have a moment of silence and an observation in lieu of a devotion. I will now ask the secretary to call the roll of the senators elect, but we're going to have to bring them into the chamber at this point uh, to do that. Senators can enter the chamber and go to your respective seats. We are doing this in groupings um, in order to make sure that uh, particularly new senators elect uh, have the ability to have a guest present while we maintain room uh, safety measures for space and occupancy. I would like to ask the secretary to call the roll of the first group of senators. Madison District, Senator Christopher A. Bray. Present. Senator Ruth Ellen Hardy. Present. Bennington District, Senator Brian A. Campion. Present. Caledonia District, Senator Joseph C. Benning. Present. Senator M. J. Kitchell. Present. Chittenden District, Senator Philip Baruch. Present. Senator Keisha K. Ray. Present. Secretary Chanel, swear in the senators present. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Keisha Rahm. The senator from the blank district. And the senator from the Nixon district. In the General Assembly of the State of Vermont. The General Assembly of the State of Vermont. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That as a member of this assembly. That as, that as a, a member, member of this assembly. I will not propose or assent to any bill. I will, will not propose or assent to any bill. bill. Vote or resolution. Vote, vote or resolution. resolution. Which shall appear to me. Shall appear, appear to me. Injurious to the people. Injurious to, to the people. people. Nor do nor consent. Nor do, do nor consent to any act or thing, whatever, any act or thing, thing whatever, that shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge, that that have shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge their rights and privileges, their, their rights and privileges, as declared by the Constitution of this state, as, as declared by the Constitution of this state. state. But will in all things, but will, will in all things. things Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. Conduct myself as a faithful, and honest, honest representative. And guardian of the people. And guardian, and guardian of the people. According to the best of my judgment and abilities. According to the best, best of my judgment, judgment and abilities. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing. Do any act or thing. Injurious to the Constitution. Injurious to the Constitution. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I did not. That I did, I did not. at the time of my election to this body, at the time of my election to this body, and that I do not now hold, and that I do not now hold any office of profit or trust, any, any office, office of profit or trust, trust under the authority of Congress, under the authority of Congress. So help me God. So help me God. I do further solemnly swear. I do, I do further solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont, the Constitution of the State of Vermont, and the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. We now, you may be seated. We will now invite in the second tranche of senators. Uh, you're welcome to please enter the chamber. And if 
go to your respective seat. <laughs> Oh, it does look like Senator Bray. Could you move over one and Senator Hardy as well? Thank you. Senator Mazza, you're one you're next to Senator Kitchell. Senator Terenzini, one there, yep. I would now like to ask the Secretary to, uh, Senator Mazza and Pearson, yes, please remain, Senators elect, excuse me, please remain standing. Uh, the Secretary shall call the roll of this next group of Senators. Tittenden District, Senator Christopher A. Pearson. Present. Essex Orleans District, Senator Russell H. Ingalls. Present. Senator Robert A. Starr. Present. Franklin District, Senator Randolph D. Brock. Present. Senator Corey J. Parent. Present. Grand Isle District, Senator Richard T. Mazza. Present. Secretary shall now swear in this, excuse me. Uh, he will continue the role with the final portion of the districts. Carlin District, Senator Brian P. Collimore. Present. Senator Joshua C. Terenzini. Present. Secretary Knapp shall now uh, swear in the senators elect from those counties. Please raise your hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Aye. 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 The senator from Blank District. In the General Assembly of the State of Vermont. Do solemnly swear. That is a member of this assembly. That is a member of this assembly. I will not propose or assent to any bill. I will not propose or assent to any bill. Vote or resolution. Vote or resolution. Which shall appear to me. Which shall appear to me. Injurious to the people. Injurious to the people. Nor do nor consent. Nor do nor consent to any act or thing whatever, or any act or thing whatever that shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge. That shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge their rights and privileges. Their rights and privileges, as declared by the Constitution of the State of Vermont. As declared by the Constitution of the State of Vermont. But will in all things. But will in all things. Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. And guardian of the people. And guardian of the people. According to the best of my judgment and abilities. According to the best of my judgment and abilities. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. And that I will not, and that I will not directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly, do any act or thing, do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution, injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. Or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I did not. That I did not at the time of my election to this body. At the time of my election to this body. And that I do not now hold. And that I do not now hold any office of profit or trust. Any office of profit or trust under the authority of Congress. Under the authority of Congress. So help me God. So help me God. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear that I will support. And I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont, the Constitution of the State of Vermont, and the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. Call me God. Congratulations. I'd like you may now be seated. I do have to ask the guests who have been in the chamber for the swearing-ins of their. Uh, friends, relatives, uh, you have to depart the chamber in order for us to allow the final 
grouping to come in, and they, I believe, guest of one of those folks. I apologize, but thank you. I'd like to now invite in the remaining senators elect to go to their respective locations. Senator Nitka, you're in this corner, and Senator Clarkson as well nearby next to Senator Bray. I'd like to ask the Secretary to please call the roll of those senators. Washington District, Senator Andrew J. Pershlett, present. Wyndham District, Senator Rebecca A. Ballant. Present. Windsor District, Senator Allison Clarkson. Present. Senator Alice W. Nitka. Present. I'd like to ask the Secretary to please call, uh, read the oath of office. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I Rebecca Ballant. The Senator from Blank District. The senator, the senator from District. In the General Assembly of the State of Vermont. The General Assembly of the State of Vermont. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That as a member of this assembly. That as a member of this assembly. I will not propose or assent to any bill. I will not propose or assent to any bill. Vote or resolution. Vote or resolution. But shall appear to me. But shall appear to me. Injurious to the people. Injurious to the people. Nor do nor consent. Nor do nor consent. To any act or thing whatever. To any act or thing whatever. That shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge. That shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge. Their rights and privileges. Their rights and privileges. As declared by the Constitution of this state. As declared by the Constitution of this state. But will in all things. But will in all things. Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. And guardian of the people. And guardian of the people. To the best of my judgment and abilities. To the best of judgment. judgment and abilities. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will, I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly do any act or thing. Any act, act or thing injurious to the Constitution. Injurious to the Constitution. Or government thereof. Government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I did not at the time of my election to this body. That I did not at the time of my election to this body. And that I do not now hold. And I do not now hold. Any office of profit or trust. Any office of profit or trust. Under the authority of Congress. Under the authority of Congress. So help me God. So help me God. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the State of Vermont. The Constitution of the State of Vermont. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. The roll has been called, and it appears, Mr. Lieutenant Governor, Senator from Senator Elect, or Senator, excuse me, from Chittenden. Uh, Mr. Secretary, this is an important day for me and my family and a lot of Vermonters, and I wonder if you might call my name again, but pronounce it correctly. Is that all right? It's Keisha Rom. Secretary shall call the roll. Chittenden District. Senator Keisha K. Rahm. Present, thank you. The roll has been called, and it appears that 19 of the 30 senators elect, or now senators, are present and in their seats, and that a quorum does exist and is ready to do business. The first order of business is the election of a secretary 
the nomination for the Office of Secretary are now in order. Senator from Windsor. It gives me great pleasure to nominate John Bloomer Jr. as Secretary of the Senate for this upcoming biennium. Part of what makes John Bloomer such a super Secretary of the Senate is that he has experienced what it's like to be a Vermont State Senator. For eight years, from 1997 to 2004, John served uh, the Rutland District as one of their senators, after which he took a modest break and returned to the State House to be elected Secretary of the Senate in 2011. The education of John Bloomer began at West Rutland and continued at Williams College. Before he earned his JD from Rutgers, he secured a master's degree in economics from the University of Pennsylvania. An important aspect of John's education and part of what makes John uniquely uh, qualified for this job is that he comes from a long line of Vermont political leaders. A credit to that legacy are the words most often used to describe him. Trustworthy, a person of integrity, knowledgeable, clever, shrewd, and a savvy strategist. John gives wise counsel, dispenses advice in a nonpartisan fashion, and knows the Senate rules inside and out. He is an amazing resource for every senator. Most importantly, John is a great listener. Every question gets a considered response. He listens and responds, sometimes with advice and sometimes with a drafted resolution which perfectly mirrors the proposer's intent. The emergency rules we are about to consider were drafted by John after he listened closely to the discussions in the debate. John is an enthusiastic protector of the legislative process and of Senate decorum. And John manages this all with humble ways and a ready smile. I encourage you to cast your ballot for John Bloomer as Secretary of the Senate. Is there a second for this nomination? The chair would like to recognize Senator from Rutland. Thank you, Mr. President. If each of us had a dictionary that had a picture or image associated with each definition, I believe the picture next to the word nonpartisan would be a picture of Secretary John Bloomer. I think everyone in this body has had occasion to confide in him about a particular bill or an idea for a procedure on a bill, knowing that the request for information would remain confidential. Regardless of political party, Secretary Bloomer treats each member of this body equally. The ability to remain nonpartisan in his interactions with us goes to the very core of why I am seconding the nomination of John Bloomer to be our secretary for another biennium. No one has held the confidence of the 30 of us more sacred than John. We simply cannot conduct our business without that level of assurance. And I know each senator feels this way. Each of us feels complete trust in his integrity. Additionally, John Bloomer's staff serves, serves us exquisitely and quietly, and we probably don't thank them enough either. The Senate functions with great efficiency because of their efforts. So I would like to thank Steve, Vanessa, Helen, and Penny for their extraordinary work in getting us ready to begin this biennium. Thank you, Mr. President. Motion has been made and seconded that John H. Bloomer, Jr. of Wallingford be elected as the Secretary of the Senate. Are there any other nominations for this office? Seeing none, there being no other nominations, the chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed and that one ballot be cast for the nominee. So moved. Uh, Senator from Bennington uh, moves. It, uh, from Bennington District has moved that the nominations be closed and that one ballot be cast for John H. Bloomer Jr. as Secretary of the Senate. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it. And John H. Bloomer Jr. of Wallingford is declared elected to the Office of Secretary of the Senate for the two years next ensuing. Will the Secretary-elect rise to receive the oath of office? Supposed to move this out. There we go. 
Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, John H. Bloomer, Jr. I, John H. Bloomer, Jr. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will be true and faithful. That I will be true and faithful. To the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing. Do any act or thing. Injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. Injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute the office of Secretary of the Senate. The office of Secretary of the Senate for the state of Vermont. For the state of Vermont. And will therein. And will therein do equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice to all men and women. To all men and women. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont. The Constitution of the State of Vermont and the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> the next order of business is the election of a president pro tempore, and nominations for that office are now in order. Chair, I'd like to recognize the Senator from Grand Isle District. President, I can't tell you how honored uh, to nominate Senator Ballant for a pro temp. Uh, you all know how important that job is, keeping everyone informed and being fair to everyone, every Senator, regardless of party uh, or where they're from. Uh, we have, uh, those of us who have worked with her in the past few years know how fair she is. Uh, being majority leader, uh, she was on the schedule, kept things moving, and was fair to everyone. Never a bad word about anyone. I look forward, as well as I hope everyone else, uh, working with her. It's a very important job. Uh, one of the things that makes it stand out, and I know she's up to it, is being fair to everyone. That's the important issue of pro tem of the Senate. It's a busy job. Her door will always be open. And I can tell you in the last month or so, the many meetings that she has held to keep everyone informed and never showing any partiality towards any particular person. So a great honor. I gladly nominate Senator Ballant for the pro tem job. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there a second to this nomination? The chair would like to recognize Senator from Rutland District. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to second the nomination of Senator Rebecca Ballant to be pro tem. For those of you who don't already know, Senator Ballant first came to Vermont in 1994 after receiving her BA from Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts, and graduating magna cum laude and Phi Beta Kappa. She then earned her master's in education from Harvard University in 1995 and her master's in history from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst in 2001. Senator Ballant and I were in the same legislative class, having been elected to our first terms in 2014 and taking office in 2015. Senator Campion was the other new senator that year. And from the first day of our first session, Becca and I have enjoyed a special relationship, a relationship based on mutual respect and trust. She is thoughtful, fair, and as many in this chamber can attest, she has added to our time here with her humor and good-natured outlook. If you're having a bad day, running into Senator Ballant can change that quickly. A winning smile and a quick word always makes you feel better. In fact, one of the things I miss most about how things have changed during this pandemic is not being able to run across Senator Ballant in the hallway and exchanging a quick hug. She has seemingly an endless supply of energy, as well as her enthusiasm, which is extremely contagious. There is an equally serious side to Senator Ballant. She's a dedicated legislator and works diligently to parse out legislation on which she will be voting. She attempts to find consensus as often as possible. This is not to say we've not been on opposite sides of an issue, and most likely <laughs> will be again, but Senator Ballant has always approached each issue with an open mind and is willing to listen to all sides. That ability is critical in the role of Senate pro tem. Being treated, being treated fairly and knowing your concerns have been heard is crucial if we are to function effectively. 
and her position as majority leader the last two sessions is a testament to the way other senators view her work. I am therefore pleased to second the nomination of Senator Becca Powell to be our pro tem. Thank you, Mr. President. The motion has been made and seconded that Rebecca A. Ballant, the Senator from Wyndham District, be elected as President Pro Tempore. Are there any other nominations for this office? Seeing none, uh, the Chair will entertain a motion that nominations be closed and that the Secretary cast one ballot for the nominee. The Chair would like to recognize the Senator from Caledonia. Thank you, Mr. President. So moved. The Senator from Caledonia District has moved that the nominations be closed and that the Secretary cast one ballot for Rebecca A. Ballant as President Pro Tempore. Are you ready for this question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it. And Senator Rebecca A. Ballant of Wyndham District is hereby declared elected to the office of President Pro Tempore. Will the Senator from Wyndham District please present herself at the bar of the Senate to receive the oath of office. Please raise your right hand. You can come on up. Of course. In fact, I can get down one if you'd like. What do you prefer? Please repeat after me. I, Rebecca A. Ballant. I, Rebecca A. Ballant. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will be true and faithful. That I will be true and faithful. To the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing. Do any act or thing. Injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. Injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Execute the office of President Pro Tempore of the Senate. Execute the office of President, President Pro Tempore of the Senate. For the state of Vermont. For the state of Vermont. And I will therein. And I will therein. Do equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice. To all men and women. To all men and women. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the State of Vermont. The Constitution of the State of Vermont. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. You're welcome to make remarks. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. We, we will miss you. I will miss you. You're a friend and you're someone who always um, did their best to hear from all voices in this chamber. Godspeed. Thank you for putting your trust in me. Thank you to all of you for your service to your communities and to our state. We're going to do some very important and very difficult work together this biennium. As I entered the chamber today, I was reminded of the very first day that I was sworn in. And uh, I had my two small children with me and Senator Bruce took a video of them zooming around the chamber. And my son was uh, making quite uh, a rascal of himself. And at the end, he flopped on the floor. And I was thinking this morning how we've all felt that way. At the end of a <laughs> laborious floor session, we have wanted to flop on our desks and we flee to the cloakroom to support each other and yet we have no cloakroom on Zoom. I know things are, are so different for all of us. But I begin my formal remarks today to, re to ask you all to remember why you were called to this work. It's okay to close your eyes and quiet your breathing and remember back to what drew you to public service. Perhaps there was something that happened in your community or in your family or an injustice that you saw. Or maybe you wanted to help make life better for your children or your children's children. Or to help out that neighbor who never seems to get a break. 
Maybe you see the folks in your community who feel powerless and you want to amplify those voices. You may see yourself as a change agent, or maybe you see yourself as someone who wants to hold on to the bits of Vermont that you knew as a child. And perhaps you hold both these perspectives at once. Let me state the obvious, but something that we often forget. We all come from different walks of life, different socioeconomic backgrounds, as senators, we do not come to this work having had the same experience. Our lives have been shaped by the families we were born into and into the towns and the villages and the cities that have molded us. The skin and the gender that we embody, the hardships we have have endured and the triumphs, large and small, that sustain us. When I look at the faces of each of my colleagues, and I look at your eyes, what I see are stories. I see the stories of all the constituents that you carry with you, and your own stories too that you bring into this chamber. And there is a lot to hate about this pandemic. I don't need to rattle off the reasons for all of you. It's been a difficult time for many of us. But lately, I've been appreciating something about needing to wear a mask, and that is I have to focus on the eyes. I have to look carefully at what people are trying to convey to me through their eyes. And that's what I want each of us to see in each other this session. We've been entrusted with holding our constituent stories and using these, ex using these stories and experiences to shape better policy, to make life better for Vermonters. That's why we do this work. Whether they run a business in Rutland or a nonprofit in Burlington, whether they hail from tiny little Halifax in my district or they live in Lindenville, we hold these stories and these narratives and it is weighty work that we do. It is consequential work to carry these narratives with us. We are a citizen legislature. We are rooted in our communities. When we go to the grocery store, grocery store, we know that someone is likely to flag us down to talk to us in the produce aisle. Hmm. Or at the post office, somebody in line might stop to tell us something that is concerning them. Sometimes we are able to give them quick advice, send them to the right person that can help them. But so often we are not able to completely solve their problem. For those of you returning to the legislature, you know this all too well. That phone call that you have to make, calling someone back to say, I'm sorry, I've done all I can. I wish that I could do more. And those of you starting on this journey as a legislature, you will know this soon enough. It is a terrible moment for both senators and for constituents. The pandemic has upended so much of the ways in which we do our work. Zoom used to be such a fun word, <laughs> one that conjures up joyful dashes, not tedious slogs. And I know many of us have felt trapped in those little boxes and have, have been confounded by the apparent fickleness of the mute button gods. <laughs> our, the form of our work right now is not ideal. We can feel isolated, cut off from each other. And we know that we cannot do our best work in isolation. We must continue to bounce ideas off of each other to tease apart complex problems. We need to approach our work with a new sense of the possible. At the start of the biennium, the focus is often on the headlining bills that we take on. It's often about the proposed laws that capture the public's imagination or its ire. 
but this year is different. Our immediate work will continue to be addressing the effects and the impact of the ongoing pandemic and how to, better, how to create better systems going forward to help our constituents. The entire country is weary from the pandemic, but the virus doesn't care. We must continue to address the dis-ease caused by the health emergency and the fear and doubt that our constituents feel. We all have our heroes that we turn to in moments of darkness and in confusion. People who can offer us light and hope. One of my heroes is former Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. She said, we must reject not only the stereotypes that others hold of us, but we must reject the stereotypes that we hold of ourselves. How can we each stretch ourselves in new ways to do our best work this session? I'm not talking about giving more energy to the cause. I know the kind of time and commitment you all have given and continue to give. I'm not calling on you to work harder because you've all worked so hard, whether it's been in this chamber or in your home districts. But I'm asking you today to think a little bit differently about this session and how you approach your work. When I was completing my master's in history, I was a teaching assistant to a wonderful man named Gerald, and Gerald McFarland. He was a professor at UMass Amherst. And Professor McFarland's motto, which he posted on his office door, was very simply this, every day is a good day. He is an upbeat person, and he tends to look for the good in everything. But I've come to understand this motto as something much more expansive than just having an optimistic view of things. It's not just about being positive. It's about seeing possibility. It's about seeing promise. And that is what I wish for, for all of us in this biennium, even though we will be serving under the shadow of this pandemic. I want us to all continue to see the possibility in the work that we do. I recently discovered the work of Swedish physician and academic Hans Rosling. He was a professor of international health and he had a gift for bringing data to life. I was listening to his work the other day on my phone as I walked the streets of Brattleboro and something that he said really stopped me in my tracks. He said, people call me an optimist because I show them the enormous progress that they didn't know about. He said, that makes me angry because I'm not an optimist. It makes me sound naive. I'm a very serious possibilist. To him, being a possibilist meant someone who neither hopes without reason nor fears without reason. He said that as a possibilist, he sees progress and it fills him with the conviction and the hope that further progress is possible. That's what I want for each of us as we do our work because our constituents need us. They need us to hold on to the cloak of the possibilist, believing that together we can make positive change for our constituents, for our communities and for our state. We are elected officials. Our authority and our political power comes from the people. We are 30 citizens who have been given an enormous, enormous responsibility to listen deeply, to think carefully, to act with courage and conviction and a moral compass, to carry with us each and every day the stories and experiences of our constituents. I am eager, I am excited, and I am so humbled to do this great and important work together. Thank you.
Excuse me one moment. So oh, it's missing. Anyway, uh, the chair would now like to recognize Senator from Caledonia District, the, Sen the Senator Kitchell. Thank you, Mr. President. It's with great pleasure that I rise to place the name of Richard T. Mazza in nomination as the, to the office as a member of the Committee on Committees. I have uh, had the pleasure of uh, being on the Transportation Committee for the last 14 years with Senator Mazza, so I feel I know him quite well at this point, and I will tell you that there is no one in this chamber who is more faithful and honest guardian of the Senate. His reputation as being fair, being honest, his integrity is above reproach. This important committee uh, has so much influence in all our lives, what committees we serve on, uh, the decisions that are made, and he has a reputation of so, being so conscientious. There is no question that his love and respect of the Senate transcends everything that he does uh, for us. I don't think I need to go into great length about Senator Mazza. We know him and work with him and highly regard him. And it's, uh, it is uh, my pleasure to uh, nominate him and ask that you cast your vote for Richard T. Mazza as the third member of the Committee on Committees. Thank you. Now, the Senator from Caledonia District has placed the name of Richard T. Mazza, the Senator from Grand Isle District, in nomination for the office of third member of the Committee on Committees. Is there a second for, to this nomination? The Chair would like to recognize the Senator from Caledonia District, Senator Benning. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm honored to follow the senior senator from California in presenting a second for Richard T. Mazza for the position of the third member on the Committee of Committees. When I was first elected in 2010, I was meeting with a predecessor of mine by the name of Robert Ide. And Senator Ide was giving me pointers on what to look for, what to do when I arrived in the Senate. And I remember distinctly he said, whatever you do, get on the good side of Senator Mazza. <laughs> Mr. President, it's been 10 years. I'm still working on <laughs> But I've made some observations over that time. There isn't anyone in this chamber more endeared to this chamber. And I bleed somewhat for him right now as I look around this room in what is our chamber that now looks like the bridge on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Senator Mazza is a great observer of all things. And for those of us who are veterans, we know that when he rises to speak, it is very infrequent. But when he does, all of us listen. His observations of all of us when going to make appointments to the various committees can sometimes seem very strange. And I'll use myself as an example, because when he first called me, asking me what it was I would like to be on, I said, well, I'm a lawyer, so judiciary makes sense. I'm a school board member, so education makes sense. I'm a lover of history, and I'm really into government operations, so government operations makes sense. True to form, and one of the warnings I received from Senator Ide was to expect the unexpected. I was appointed to natural resources and institutions, <laughs> which for you newbies was a great educational experience. So I rise to give that second, and I hope that you will nominate him as advice to newbies. Don't take 10 years to get on the good side of Senator Moss. Thank you. <laughs> Now, the motion has been made and seconded that Richard T. Mazza, the senator from Grand Isle District, be elected as the third member of the Committee on Committees. Are there any other nominations for this office? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion 
that nominations be closed and that the secretary cast one ballot for the nominee. So moved. The senator from Wyndham, uh, Senator Ballant, has moved that the nominations be closed and that the secretary cast one ballot for Richard T. Mazza as the third member of the Committee on Committees. Are you ready for this question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it. And Richard T. Mazza, the senator from Grand Isle District, is declared elected to the office of th the third member of the Committee on Committees for the two years next ensuing. Would the senator please approach? Please raise your right arm. You can come on up. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I, Richard T. Mazza. I, Richard T. Mazza. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will be true and faithful. That I will be true and faithful. To the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing. Any act or thing. Injurious to the Constitution. Injurious to the Constitution. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. I will faithfully. Execute the office. Execute the office. Of third member of the Committee on Committees of the Senate. Third member of the Committee on Committees of the Senate. For the state of Vermont. For the state of Vermont. And will therein. And will therein. Do equal right and justice. Do equal right and justice. To all men and women. All men and women. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. And ability. And ability. According to law. According to law. So help me God. So help me God. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the State of Vermont. State of Vermont and the Constitution. And the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. you want to say anything? Thank you very much for having the faith and trust in me for this job. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and I tried to be as fair to everyone as I possibly can. And after Friday, you get your committee assignments. I hope you respect me as well. <laughs> but, uh, I just want to take one moment to thank uh, uh, our lieutenant governor. Uh, what an excellent job uh, working with him in the past. And uh, I wish him the best in the future. And also Senator Ash, uh, who is not here with us today, but uh, who was pro tem and did an excellent job on treating everyone fairly. And uh, I, I just want to mention those two folks who I've worked with. And I thank you again for the trust that you're putting into me in this position. And uh, I will do my best. Thank you very much. The chair wishes to announce the appointment by the Secretary of Stephen D. Marshall of Swanton as the Assistant Secretary of the Senate, Vanessa J. Davidson, Davison, excuse me, of Hardwick as Operations Manager, Journal Clerk, Helen L. Estroff of Montpelier as the Calendar Clerk, and Penny M. Carpenter of Waterbury as the Office Assistant. The Senate is ready to do business. And we have a few Senate resolutions and a joint resolution to take up at this time. First, we have Senate Resolution 1, relating to the rules of the Senate offered by Senator Ballant of Wyndham District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. SR1, Senate Resolution relating to the rules of the Senate, resolved by the Senate, that the Senate be governed by the permanent rules of the Senate for the 2021 biennial session as adopted in 1989, with amendments adopted in 1997, 2003, 2004, 2007, 2008, 2013, 2016, and 2019, until others are adopted. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution, and the question is, shall the resolution be adopted by the Senate? Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying no. The ayes have it and you have adopted the resolution. There is another Senate resolution for adoption, SR2, relating to amending the permanent rules of the Senate to include rules during declared emergencies offered by Senator Ballot 
of Wyndham District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. SR2, Senate resolution relating to amending the permanent rules of the Senate to include rules during declared emergencies. Resolved by the Senate. First, Senate Rule 9A is added to read as follows. Rule 9A, rule regarding remote meeting and voting of the Senate during declared emergencies. In the event the governor issues a de declaration of emergency during the declaration of emergency, A, the Rules Committee may authorize that a session or sessions of the Senate during such declared emergency be concurrently conducted electronically at which one or more senators may participate, de debate, deliberate, and vote in a meeting of the Senate from a remote location. If necessary, the Rules Committee may make this authorization remotely in conformance with this rule. B, each senator voting remotely shall do so using both audio and video capability in a format approved by the Rules Committee. C, the format authorized by the Rules Committee for a session of the Senate shall enable public access in a manner consistent with Vermont's Constitution. D, a senator participating remotely shall be considered present and in attendance at the meeting of the Senate, including for purposes of determining if a quorum is present. Both present and remotely connected senators compliant with the terms of this rule shall be counted towards a quorum of the whole. E, a senator participating remotely desires to address when the senator for participating remotely desires to address the Senate, the senator shall notify the presiding officer through the electronic means used by the senator to participate remotely. When recognized, the presiding officer shall announce the senator, and the senator may speak through the same electronic means as if physically present on the Senate floor. F, to the extent practicable, a senator participating remotely under this rule shall participate from the senator's senatorial district. G, the authority of the Rules Committee under this Rule 9A terminates upon the expiration of the declared emergency. Second, Senate Rule 32A is added to read as follows. Rule 32A, rule regarding remote meeting and voting of Senate committees during declared emergencies. In the event the governor issues a declared emergency during the declaration of emergency, A, the Rules Committee is vested with the authority to permit Senate committees, including itself, to meet and vote electronically as the Rules Committee determines appropriate. If necessary, the Rules Committee may make this authorization remotely in conformance with this rule. B, in exercising its authority under Section A, the Rules Committee, to the extent applicable and practicable, shall include the provisions of Rule 9A in its authorizations. C. The authority of the Rules Committee under this Rule 9A terminates upon the expiration of the declared emergency. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted by the Senate? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it. You have adopted the resolution. There is another Senate resolution for adoption, SR3, providing a senator-elect may take and subscribe the oath by electronic means offered. This is also offered by Senator Ballant of Wyndham District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. SR3, Senate resolution providing a senator-elect may take and subscribe their oath by electronic means. Whereas it is critical to take steps to control outbreaks of COVID-19 to minimize the risk to the public maintain the health and safety of Vermonters, and limit the spread of infection in our community. Whereas the governor of the state of Vermont issued a declaration of state of emergency in response to COVID-19, now therefore be it resolved by the Senate for the 2021 biennial session, a senator may take and subscribe their required oath by an electronic format using both audio and video capabilities. Now, you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted by the Senate? Are you ready for the question? Senator from Chinden. Mr. Lieutenant Governor, I'm wondering about a date. I heard 2021. Is that correct? Uh, I'll have to consult with the Secretary for a moment. Mm -hmm.
Senator, you um, have astute ears. However, it is for the 2021 biennial session. So it is the rule of, it is swearing them in for this biennium, which is a titled as such. Thank you. Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. There is yet another re Senate resolution for adopting. SR4, relating to, the, to informing the House of the organization of the Senate, this is offered by the Senator uh, from Windsor District, Senator Clarkson. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. SR4, Senate resolution relating to appointment of a committee to inform the governor of the organization of the Senate. Resolved by the Senate, that a committee of four senators be appointed by the president to wait upon his excellency, the governor, and to inform him that the Senate has organized and is ready on its part to proceed with the business of the session. For the record, the secretary has apologized to me for the uh, <clears throat> writing in my script. Uh, You've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted by the Senate? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. Yeah. There is another Senate resolution for adoption, SR5, this one is relating to informing the House of the organization of the Senate offered by the Senator from Windsor, Senator Clarkson. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. SR5, Senate resolution relating to informing the House of the organization of the Senate. Resolved by the Senate, that the Secretary be directed to inform the House of Representatives that a quorum of the Senate has assembled and organized by the election of John H. Bloomer Jr. of Wallingford as Secretary and Rebecca A. Ballin a senator from Wyndham District as president pro tempore and is ready on its part to proceed with the business of the session. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the, shall the resolution be adopted by the Senate? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted the resolution. We have a joint Senate resolution to take up at this time. JRS 1, relating to joint rules, it is offered by Senator Maza of Grand Isle District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. JRS 1, joint resolution relating to joint rules. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the joint rules of the Senate and the House as adopted in 2019 be adopted as the joint rules of this biennial session until others are adopted. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution, and the question is, shall the Senate adopt JRS-1 on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you've adopted JRS-1. We now have another joint resolution to take up at this time, JRS-2. The Emergency Temporary Joint Rule 22A is offered by Senator Ballant of Windsor District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. JRS 2, Joint Resolution Relating to the Adoption of an Emergency Temporary Joint Rule 22A. Whereas it is critical to take steps to control outbreaks of COVID-19, to minimize the risk to the public, maintain the health and safety of Vermonters, and limit the spread of infection in our community, whereas the governor of the state of Vermont issued a declaration of state of emergency in response to COVID-19, whereas to confront and address the threat of COVID-19, joint committees of the legislature must continue to meet, whereas the rules, tradition, and custom require that a joint committee to formally meet, a committee quorum must be physically present in a single location, and only those physically present at the meeting location are permitted to vote. Whereas to appropriately address the needs of the state of Vermont while limiting the threat of infection, joint committees may need to meet and vote electronically. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that in, that in emergency temporary joint rule to be designated Rule 22A be adopted by the Senate and House of Representatives to read as follows. 
Rule 22A, emergency rule regarding joint committee meetings. A, the Joint Rules Committee is vested with the authority to permit any joint committees of the Vermont Legislature, including itself and conference committees, to meet and vote electronically at the Joint Rules Committee as the Joint Rules Committee determines appropriate. If necessary, the Joint Rules Committee may make this authorization remotely in conformity with this rule. B, the authority of the Joint Rules Committee under this Rule 22A terminates upon the expiration of the executive's declared emergency. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt JRS 2 on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it and you've adopted JRS 2. We have another joint re Senate resolution to take up at this time, JRS 3. There's a joint, excuse me, joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to receive the report of the committee appointed to canvas votes for state officers offered by Senator Ballant of Wyndham District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. JRS 3, joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to receive the report of the committee appointed to canvas votes for state officers. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the two houses meet in joint assembly on Thursday, January 7, 2021, at 10 o'clock in the forenoon to receive the report of the joint canvassing committee appointed to canvas votes for governor, lieutenant governor, state treasurer, secretary of state, auditor of accounts, and attorney general. And if it shall be declared by said committee that there have been no election by the voters of any of said state officers, then to proceed forthwith to elect such, such officers as have not been elected by the voters. And be it further resolved that the joint assembly shall be concurrently conducted electronically at which members of the general assembly may participate, debate, and vote from a remote location. And be it further resolved that should a ballot be necessary, voting by ballot shall be conducted as practicable, consistent with Vermont's early or absentee voter statute at 17 BSA section 2531 at set. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt the resolution on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you've adopted JRS 3. We now have another joint Senate resolution to take up at this time, JRS 4, providing the canvassing committee of the General Assembly uh, meeting shall be concurrently conducted electronically offered by Senator Ballant of Wyndham District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. JRS 4, joint resolution providing the canvassing committee of the General Assembly meeting shall be concurrently conducted electronically. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives, the canvassing committee of the General Assembly meeting shall be concurrently conducted electronically at which members may participate from a remote location. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution and the question is, shall the Senate adopt JRS 4 on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you've adopted JRS 4. We now have another joint Senate resolution to take up at this time. JRS 5 is a joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to hear a message from the governor offered. This is also offered by Senator Ballant of Wyndham District. JRS 5, joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to hear a message from the governor. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the two houses meet in joint assembly on Thursday, January 7, 2021, at two o'clock in the afternoon to receive a message from the governor and be it further resolved that the joint assembly shall be concurrently conducted electronically. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt JRS 5 on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you have adopted JRS 5. We have another joint Senate resolution to take up at this time, JRS 6. It's relating to town meeting adjournment. It is also offered by Senator Ballant of Windsor District. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. JRS 6, joint resolution relating to town meeting adjournment. 
Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that when the two houses adjourn on Friday, February 26, 2021, or Saturday, February 27, 2021, it be to meet again no later than Tuesday, March 9, 2021. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the Senate adopt JRS 6 on its part? Are you ready for the question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, indicate by saying nay. The ayes have it, and you've adopted JR, JRS 6. Now, pursuant to the provision of Senate Resolution 3, I hereby appoint as the committee uh, to inform the governor that the Senate is ready to proceed with the business of the session. The following senators, Senator Clarkson, Senator Campion, Senator Brock, and Senator Pearson. When they proceed to perform their duties, the Senate will stand in recess until the fall of the gavel, during which, pursuant to SR 3, senators may take and subscribe their oaths by electronic format. Senators, you may proceed to perform your duties. Please assemble and... You may proceed, and then the Senate will stand in recess. We're still on. However, we are going to keep the uh, YouTube flowing because we will be swearing in those other senators and in order for those senators' process to be visible for the public. The Senate will stand in recess. At this point, senators-elect who want to take and subscribe their oath by electronic format may turn on their video, and the Senate secretary will administer the oath of office to those who appear. If I could ask the senators who are present to please remain uh, silent, even though we're in recess, uh, because the microphones are still on, because the secretary has to administer the oath of office to the senators who are with us electronically. Thank you. I believe the senator. Right. Right. They just have to meet. Those two. Oh. Um, just push the button for a second. This, would the secretary please swear in to the oath of office the senators here electronically? Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Aye. Aye. Anthony Polito. Daniel Lyons. The senator from Blank District. The senator, the senator from Washington. Washington. Washington District. In the General Assembly of the State of Vermont. In the General Assembly of the State of Vermont. 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 Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That as a member of this assembly. And as a member of this assembly. I will not propose or assent to any bill. I will not propose or assent to any bill. Any bill. Any bill. Vote or resolution. Vote or resolution. resolution. Which shall appear to me. Which shall appear to me. Shall appear to me. Injurious to the people. Injurious, Injurious to, the people. to the people. Nor do nor consent. Nor do nor, do, do, nor consent. Do, or consent. To any act or thing, whatever. To any act, act, act or thing, or whatever. Thing, whatever. That shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge. That shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge. To lessen or abridge. Their rights and privileges. Their rights and privileges. Their rights and privileges. As declared by the Constitution of this state. As, as declared, by, declared the by the Constitution of this state. But will in all things. And will in all, in all things. things. But will in all things. Conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative. Conduct and guardian of the people, and guardian, and guardian of, of the people, people. guardian of the people, according to the best of my judgment and abilities, 
according to the according to best my judgment and abilities. So help me God. So help me God. I do, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. That I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that, and that I, I, will, I will, will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly, directly, or, indirectly, or, indirectly or indirectly. Directly. Do any act or thing. Do, do any, any act, act, act or thing. Or thing. Injurious to the Constitution. Injurious to the Constitution. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. So help me God. So help, so help me God. God. I do solemnly swear. I, I do, do solemnly, solemnly swear. swear. Solemnly swear. That I did not. That I did, that I did, did not. not. That I did not. That I did not. At the time of my election to this body. At the, at the time, time of my election to this body. To this body. And that I do not now hold. And that and I, I, I do not, I do not now hold. hold. Any office or any office of profit or trust. Any, any office, office of profit, or, profit, or, profit, or, profit, or, profit or, or trust. Under the authority of Congress. Under the authority, authority of, Congress. of Congress. So help me God. So, so help, help me God. God. I do further solemnly swear. I do further solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will, I will support. support. Constitution of the state of Vermont. The Constitution, the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help, so help me God. God. Congratulations. Can Thank you, you Mr. Secretary. Uh, I, I do have to state for the senators uh, that were just sworn in. Uh, that the Senate sessions have not been authorized to be concurrently conducted electronically yet. So those senators who are on the video, if you would now please close your video so that we may gavel back into session. We can have the committee return. Uh, the, the senators who are on the committee to inform the governor may re-enter the chamber. To your respective locations. You want a gavel? The Senate will please come to order. Senators, do you have a report? I believe the Senator from Windsor. The committee has performed its duties pursuant to Senate Resolution 4 and informed the governor that the Senate is organized. The next order is that pursuant to the Senate rules, I hereby nominate as a committee for the part of the Senate to canvass votes for state officers. Senator Hardy of Addison District, Senator Campion of Bennington District, Senator Benning of Caledonia District, Senator Rahm of Chittenden District, Senator Ingalls of Essex Orleans District, Senator Parent of Franklin District, Senator Maza of Grand Isle District, Senator Westman, Senator Westman of Lamoille District, Senator McDonald of Orange District, Senator Terenzini of Rutland District, Senator Perschlick of Washington District, Senator White of Wyndham District, and Senator Clarkson of Windsor District. I'd like to recognize the Senator from Wyndham, Senator Ballant. Mr. President, I move that the Senators be placed in nomination by the President to be elected. Now the Senator from Wyndham, Senator Ballant, has moved that the Senators placed in nomination by the President be elected. The question is, shall these nominees for the canvassing committee be elected are you ready for this question? If so, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, indicate by saying nay. 
The ayes have it, and these senators are declared elected as members of the canvassing committee. Will those senators just elected as members of the canvassing committee please rise to receive the oath of office from the secretary. And that's for those who are present. For those that uh, were just sworn in electronically, we will administer this oath prior to the canvas, but not at this moment. Secretary. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office as members of the canvassing committee for state officers to the best of your judgment and abilities according to law? So help you God. I will. I will. Congratulations. Chair, I'd like to designate Senator White to serve as chair of the joint canvassing committee to canvass votes for state officers. The members of this canvassing committee will meet with the Secretary of State at approximately 3 p.m. This meeting is a concurrent electronic session. You may attend this meeting in person or under the terms of JRS 4. You may attend this meeting remotely. Well, you've received a meeting invitation for those meeting remotely. Are there any other matters to take up at this time? The chair would like to recognize the senator from Wyndham District, Senator Ballot. Mr. President, I move subject to announcements that the Senate stand in adjournment until 11.30 a.m. Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Now, the Senator from Wyndham District has moved that subject to any announcement, the Senate do now adjourn until 11.30 a.m. Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Are there any announcements? Senator from Caledonia. President. I rise to specifically thank you, Senate Secretary John Bloomer and Vanessa Davison for putting together what is actually an historic moment for this chamber. It has all run very smoothly and we all appreciate the work that you have done to make that happen. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Secretary, this is rules, correct? And do we have the joint rules? No, the word. Okay, thank you. On behalf of the Committee on Committees, I would like to announce the Rules Committee. Uh, those are Senator Ballant, Senator Maza, Senator Clarkson, Senator Hooker, and Senator Brock. I would like to make one further announcement, uh, which is that yesterday was the Senator from Chinden's birthday, Senator Pearson, for those that would like to know. And I'd like to make one statement of personal privilege, if I may. Uh, it's been an incredible honor uh, to serve with you all uh, and welcome to the new members of the Senate. Um, you're, you're in for a ride. I think the Senator from Wyndham addressed the incredible um, responsibility, honor um, that you have uh, that I'm sure you will all uh, wield with respect and integrity. I feel extremely honored to serve in this body, or I guess with this body, I'm not in it, um, and in this state where the institution of democracy is so revered and cherished across all parties, be it Republican, Democrat, progressive, and independents that exist in the other body as well. And I think it was summed up well by the senator from Caledonia with respect to his remarks regarding the senator from Grand Isle in terms of the reverence for the institutional norms. It's not just the rules that you adopt. It is the norms and values of respect for the intent behind those rules. And I can't think of another body or state that holds those values at the core of what we do. And that without respect for the institution, that value that the Senator from Wyndham mentioned, that power that the Senator from Wyndham mentioned, that the citizens of the state give us, whether they voted for us individually or not, rests with that faith of the value of the institution. And I'm certainly sad to be going, 
but I am so pleased that in departing this position, I know that you all hold those values dear and will set an example not only in this state, but for the country. Thank you. Senator from Chindon. Mr. President, um, may I just offer a few comments on per point of personal privilege? <clears throat> they are directed at you, Mr. President. Um, when I first stepped into this body to be, into this building to be sworn into office, it was filling a vacancy in the House. And I think many of you know, Mr. President was, and I were district mates in a very small section of Burlington. Uh, from that very first step into the building, you and I have been connected in that way. You had at that point, I think, served for um, close to 10 years, maybe it was eight years at that point, but you had tremendous experience, I had none. You tutored me uh, on the ways of this building, on the issues, on the statutes. I watched you move on to chair, watched you grow, watched you pass votes 11-0, controversial votes repeatedly, then had uh, got to watch you uh, while I remained in the House, watched you come over here, uh, grow in this role, and then ultimately by the time I was sworn into this room, you were at the roster. So our dance through this process has always been very personal and special to me, and I have been, uh, I've admired watching you grow in each of your stages and watching you be grounded in uh, service, grounded in issues, grounded in writing the economy for far too many of our constituents. And uh, I have profound respect and admiration for your work. And I know while you will not be here on a daily basis, I will now have the um, responsibility and obligation to serve you as a constituent, and I am quite confident uh, you will not be shy in that manner. And I look forward to uh, buying your vegetables and uh, hearing your commentary as I uh, try to my best to serve you as your senator. But I just want to say thank you for personally what you've given me and taught me these many years, and thank you uh, for your service to our great state. Be well. Are there any further announcements? Seeing none, Senator from Wyndham District, as moved that subject to any announcements, the Senate do now adjourn until 11.30 a.m. Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Oops. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it, and the Senate will stand adjourned until 11.30 a.m. Thursday, January 7th, 2021. Congratulations.